All right, welcome. Hi. Welcome to our next Adobe Connect with Endangered Species. We hope you guys are really looking forward to it. We know we are. So without further ado, I think we're going to go ahead and get started with the first video. <laughs> Program. I think it's actually animal senses. Animal senses. Oh, I like exciting. animal senses. Oh, yeah, it calls Lauren. Even with the power outages, like oh, really. Yeah. Like, what is that? Oh, what? <gasps> oh, oh, oh. The endangered species need our help. Let's do this. Hey, could you sign off on some? Oh, hey. Have you seen Haley or Chelsea? So endangered means that there's not very many members of a species left, and they're endangered of going extinct. That extincts. So extinct means that there's no living members of a species alive anymore. Kind of like the dinosaurs. And like unicorns. No, unicorns aren't real. If unicorns aren't real, then dinosaurs can't be real. So here we are surrounded by a group of subspecies called the on Onager? On 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 Onger? 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 I don't know, whatever. They're called Kulan. Yep, and Kulan are endangered because they're being hunted illegally in Central Asia. Oh. Is that why they have such a long face? Is no. Sad? No, they're. They're in the equid family with the horses. Oh. Yeah. So, so if that's a coulon, then what's a coulot? Um, that. Oh, I get it. So the next animals that need our help are the scimitar horned oryx. Scimitars! These are members of the antelope family that live in the deserts of Africa. You can find antelope all over the world, but the oryx have adapted to live specifically in the desert. They are able to survive in this habitat by raising their own body temperature to conserve water, which is one of the basic needs of all animals. These oryx are endangered because of widespread hunting, mostly for their horns and pelts. They're actually listed as extinct in the wild, but thanks to the conservation work of zoos across the world, they're starting to make a comeback. It's rumored that the myth about unicorns may have started with the oryx. When you look at them from the side, they appear to have one horn. See? I told you they were real. Get up! Now I'm dead. No, you're not. I died. All right, welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that first segment that we had for you. Before we get into question and answers, we wanted to just go over a few things, of so some things that you guys can do at home. There's a lot of conservation efforts that are going on uh, worldwide with the help of zoos um, that are going to help save these endangered species and help them out in the wild. Uh, but there's some things that you can do at home that are pretty simple. Um, and what's really big is reduce, reuse, recycle. Uh, I don't know if any of your parents use any of the reusable shopping bags, but those are really, really important because thousands and thousands of plastic bags are used across the world every single day. Thousands, literally every second. Uh, so anything you can do to help reduce that, because unfortunately a lot of waste from land ends up in the ocean, and plastic bags actually can block the sunlight that plants in the ocean need to grow, and when they grow and they survive, they actually produce a lot of the oxygen that we need to breathe. So those are really important. Yep. Another thing you can do is use a reusable water bottle instead of those plastic water bottles. Plastic water bottles can be very harmful to the environment, and also, in case you didn't know, the U.S. alone, in just one week, uses enough plastic water bottles to wrap around the entire Earth about five times. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of water bottles. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing you can do is uh, actually recycle cell phones and electronics. There's a mineral or an ore in your cell phone or your parent's cell phones that is called Colton, and it is mined not only in Africa, Australia, but I, and Asia, but actually all across the world. And unfortunately, when they open up a mine, they have to destroy habitat for wildlife, such as the Kulan and the Oryx. Uh, and it's really important to help recycle and reuse what we already have. Yep. 
And, but, you know, all this conservation, just the little things that you do at home, is really starting to help these animals. In fact, when we first started this video, the Kulon were listed as an endangered species. However, thanks to all that conservation work, Kulon, we're very happy to say, have been taking off the endangered species list after the completion of this video, and they are now just labeled as near threatened with a stable population trend. So they're doing really well and we're really excited about that. But now's the time that we're going to go ahead and open it up to questions. So if you guys have any questions about any of the topics that we discussed or the animals we went over, go ahead and send them over. All right. So let's get started with the first question. Um, we have a question here. What electronics other than cell phones have Colton or can be recycled? That's an excellent question. Um, actually, here we recycle the cell phones that we get uh, with EcoCell, and they actually have opened up the recycling program to also things like tablets and MP3 players. Uh, I actually know some uh, technology stores will also have recycling bins in their entryway. They'll also accept things like computers and gaming systems. Uh, so really, any electronics you can recycle that we already have made uh, really helps to save habitat. All right, excellent. The next question we have here is, how long do oryx live for? That's an excellent question. Believe it or not, no one really knows how long they live for in the wild. There's not really good research done on that. However, through zoos and other captive um, breeding, we found out that usually in captivity, they live around 20 years. So it's pretty good for an antelope species. Definitely. All right, we have a great question here from Northboro. How many animals, oh, pardon me, what are some endangered animals that live here in Florida? And they're wondering about Palm Beach County in particular. That's a great question. Uh, believe it or not, we don't have too many endangered species here in Florida, thankfully. Um, but there are still some that do need our help. We have the ivory-billed uh, woodpe uh, woodpecker, unfortunately. Uh, we also have some sea turtles. There's actually the... Uh, Kips Redley sea turtle, they're actually critically endangered. So is the red wolf here in Florida. They're critically endangered as well, which means that they're not doing very good. But just remember, keep reducing, reusing, and recycling to help those species. All right, so we have another great question that came in. Uh, Miss Bruninger's class is wondering, are lions endangered, and do you know how many are in the wild? Lions actually got taken off the endangered species list. They are still threatened though. They are listed as vulnerable, which, you know, it's it's not where we want them to be at. But it's better. It's a lot better. As for how many are left in the world, I'm actually not, I'm not sure, sure off the top number. of my head. Yeah. All right. So I think we're gonna go to our next video clip now, if we wanna go ahead and cue that up and everyone can tune back in. All right, perfect. The next endangered species is the white-handed gibbon. Gibbons are lesser apes and not monkeys because they do not have tails. They mate for life and they sing a duet that's unique to each pair. Gibbons have arms twice as long as their bodies, which help them swing through the trees in a movement called brachiation. They are native to the rainforests of Asia, which are disappearing due to the cutting down of trees. That's enough of that. So what's the next animal we're learning about? Actually, it's a bird. Is it a plane? No, no, it's it's actually really a bird. Oh, oh a bird. It's, it's those birds actually over there. And what are those birds? Those are SARS cranes. I love SARS cranes. SARS cranes are mostly found in Southern Asia in the wild. They're endangered because their wetland habitats are being destroyed or taken over for farming. Many cranes are usually found in habitats that contain bodies of fresh water. SARS cranes have long beaks, necks, and legs, allowing them to wade into the shallows to find food. They're also the tallest birds that can fly. They stand around six feet tall. Um, Chelsea, you're not six feet tall. Aww. Yeah, get, get down. Let's go. They also do a special dance that attracts a mate. Anyway, there are a lot of endangered animals in the world that we didn't get to talk about. 
We just wanted to highlight a few that we have here that you may not have heard of. There's actually a lot of things that you can do to help protect all animals and their habitats. Some simple things you can do at home include reducing, reusing, and recycling. You can talk to your friends and family to figure out some things you can recycle. All right, welcome back everyone. Um, we just wanted to re-answer one of the questions towards the end of the other live portion. It was, what are some endangered species that currently live here in Florida? Um, a lot of them actually have been taken off the endangered species and come more towards threatened, like the ones that live locally, like the gopher tortoise, for example, and the manatees. But mm -hmm. some of the ones that you mentioned were? We have the ivy bill uh, wood, excuse me, woodpecker. He's been in danger now. Uh, we also have the hawksbill sea turtle. We also have the Kemp's red, redly sea turtle. We have the Florida panther. And we even have the red wolf. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you'll actually need to keep these in mind because the art contest that is open to anyone in K through 12, including homeschool students, mm -hmm. uh, they're available um, to enter through the Endangered Species Coalition. Uh, and you can actually create original works of art and submit them electronically. Uh, there is an attachment in the Adobe room that has the website of where you can get more information on the guidelines and the rules, um, as well as the link for you to submit your artwork electronically. Um, now, if you send them to us, they unfortunately won't be judged since we're not running the competition. Uh, so remember to submit those electronically. Um, the artwork should be original. Uh, and definitely take a look at those guidelines to get a better idea of some of the um, things that you need to follow. Now, it does have to be, your subject should be uh, an endangered species that lives in the U.S., flies over the U.S., is in U.S. waters. Uh, or a, a species that used to be on the endangered list that may no longer be. Yes, yes, and we were just discussing uh, about the SARS cranes that we showcased in our video. Uh, they're another example of an animal that was endangered and just recently got taken off the endangered species list. Unfortunately, they are not doing as well as the Kulan are. Uh, they are still listed as threatened um, with a listing of vulnerable. So we still need to keep doing that conservation work out there, keep you know, doing the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle, and hopefully their population trend will increase again and they'll be taken off being threatened as well. Mm -hmm. So I think we're gonna go ahead and open the floor for some more questions about any of the topics that we've discussed. So go ahead and bring them on. All right, so we've got uh, some more questions coming in here. Thank you very much, everyone. Please keep them coming. Uh, so the next question we'll cover is, how many eggs do saurus cranes lay? That's an excellent question. They do usually have one to two eggs. Uh, three to four is rare, but they do usually have on average one to two. All right, uh, we have another question here. What else can we recycle? That's a great question. You can recycle newspaper, uh, any kind of plastic. Also, uh, your aluminum cans, milk jugs, egg cartons, cardboard. Well, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, oh, fishing line. Mm -hmm. Fishing line is really important, especially to those sea turtles we mentioned briefly. Uh, fishing line is actually really dangerous. It can entangle a lot of different animals, and it's dangerous for 600 years. Yeah. Yeah. So always try to make sure you're recycling that fishing line. You don't let it go into the wild. All right, I think we have time for one more question here. Um, we have a question coming in. What do white-handed gibbons eat? A great question, you might answer that one. So white-handed gibbons love fruits and veggies. They love that. I'm sure everyone's thinking that they're a type of monkey. They are not. Um, white gibbons are an ape. Monkeys have tails, apes do not. But that doesn't mean that they don't like the occasional banana. <laughs> They do love their bananas, mm -hmm. but yeah, they're they're gonna be eating all that kind of herba herbaceous material. Okay, all right. Well, we want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, we hope that you really enjoyed this Adobe uh, and that you guys take advantage of the art contest. Uh, we didn't mention that there is a few prizes available for the Endangered Species Coalition. Yeah. The grand prize is a trip for the artist and uh, guardian to go to Washington D.C. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> um, but thanks again for uh, joining us and again click on that attachment to get more information uh, on that art contest and thanks for joining us.